Hi class, this is Professor Barry Brennan. I'm here to discuss with you about interpersonal relationships and we're going to focus on what's called the dark side of relationships. And this will be part one of a series of a few videos here and then we'll be going on to part two um, in, a, in another series. And we'll be focusing, we'll look at what is, what do we mean by dark side, what are we talking about? And then we will focus on deception specifically, looking at deception interpersonal theory, or deception, interpersonal deception theory, hello. And we'll also look at ways that we detect deception and we'll, that's kind of will be our focus for this particular series. And if you haven't figured it out, this is for my interpersonal communication class. And we're gonna get right to the PowerPoint right now. Hope you're having a great day. Okay, here we are. So, I don't know about you, but when I think about dark side, it's kind of like creepy, right? Especially we live in a society when we think of dark, like it's creepy and scary and it's usually around fear. And that's why I'm, I believe that in, in our discipline, we chose to call it the dark side because it's a part of ourselves or the part of our lives that uh, most of us don't want to talk about. Uh, we don't want to acknowledge. It happens because the truth is human behavior is dark and light. Uh, it has both sides. That's how we learn is through contrast. So we're going to just focus on that. And I want to give this um, a little shout out to anyone that has that anything that comes up regarding the stuff that we're going to talk about in these videos, I want you to contact me directly and we will get you to the right person if you need any assistance. Okay. Cause sometimes this kind of thing brings up things for people and that they didn't even realize. And so if that happens, please contact me. I'm here for you. You know that. So contact me directly and we will, uh, we will work together, to figure out what you need. Okay. So let's get going. So a dark side of relationships, but defining and understanding what dark side means when communicating interpersonally. And our focus again will be on deception. Here we go. We look at what dark side, how we define it. Negative communication exchanges. Okay. So remember communication is this transactional process in which people simultaneously create, interpret, and negotiate shared meaning, right? So this is negative communication, meaning it's dysfunctional in some way right? Dysfunctional really means it's that word has been played with a lot. Dysfunctional just means it's not functional. It doesn't work. It doesn't help things progress. Dysfunctional means it stops communication or it creates barriers to communication or it hurts people, right? It harms people. So that's what you think about the word dysfunction. D-I-S means takes away from, dis or, or diminishing. So it becomes less functional, okay? that may contribute to dysfunctional interpersonal relationships. And that word is thrown around a lot. Uh, and by the way, folks, most people have some level of dysfunction in their life. It's normal. It's how we learn and grow. So don't freak out about that. No one has a perfect life. Okay. Uh, now we're going to look at what do we define as that contributes to dysfunctional relationships. Obviously, deception and lying, right? Not telling the truth jealousy and conflict, right? And we're talking about conflict, like conflict that leads to violence, that kind of conflict or continuous conflict. Conflict is you've already figured out. We've talked about this in class. It's normal to have some conflict. There's just no way you're not going to have conflict in relationships because we're different people, right? There's no way you're going to have some conflict. So how we treat that conflict and how we resolve that conflict is important. And that's where the healthy part comes in. So conflict, uh, embarrassment, loneliness, codependency, obsession, and addiction. Now, those are things that I added on there because I know a little bit about addiction and obsession and codependency kind of go along with that. Codependency means feeling like you have to take care of and you're responsible for other people's lives, other people's feelings. Uh, oftentimes you're an enabler or a rescuer, which means you're someone that always rescues people when they're in trouble people depend on you. You get your self-esteem from helping others. Like not like because you're being a good person and you're like to volunteer, but like your self-esteem is dependent upon helping others. 
So you need people to need you. Okay. That's what, that's like kind of the root of codependency. So we understand what that means. Obsession means you're focused on something and you can't let go of it, right? It, it takes over your mind. It takes over your life. That's all you can think about, whether it's, you can be obsessed with a person, you can be obsessed with food, you can be obsessed with drugs or alcohol. There's all, you can be obsessed with your job, right? There's all ways that you can be obsessed. Obsession means something that's taken over your life and your life is out of balance. Okay. Addiction is when you are actually addicted to some, something that's not you. Okay. Some substance, some behavior, right? That is like obsession. It's taken over your life. Oftentimes so addiction is something that in help hurts you in your health, right? Obsession more has to do with your mind that can hurt you too obviously with your health, but addiction is generally associated with drugs and alcohol and food, right? Could be gambling as well. Could be sex addiction. Those things you in an addictive spiral will be harmful to your health, right? Let's just talk about sex addiction for a minute. You could be addicted to sex, pornography, any of those things, and they will end up being detrimental to your relationships. They'll be detrimental to your health. You could get um, all kinds of, uh, sexually transmitted diseases. Um, and, um, addiction usually is, is about chasing a high. So I've heard people talk about people, the high they get from like hooking up the high of doing something they're not supposed to do. Um, so th that sex can be an addiction, just like alcohol or drugs, right? Um, I don't know if you know this about like cocaine and I don't know if this is true about meth, but in cocaine, the first time if you ever take, if you ever snort cocaine or however you do it, the first high you get out of cocaine is really your only true high. And that, um, and if I'm wrong about this, tell me this, but this is what I've, what I've read and heard in that if you have an addiction, you're chasing that first high that you got for the rest of your addiction. So think about that's interesting, isn't it? That's why at some point it doesn't work anymore. You're not, you need more and more and more to feel better. So addiction has several purposes. One is you're chasing high. One is you don't have to feel what you're feeling because that's what addiction does is it shuts down your feelings. The thing about addiction though, and obsession and codependency, those things you may shut down your feelings, but your feelings don't go away. They're still in your in your body. And if you don't deal with any kind of feelings that you're having that are uncomfortable for you, they will manifest physically in your body. That's a fact. So think about that for a little bit. All right. We're talking about dark side stuff, right? Actually, I love talking about this stuff um, because I think this is the more we talk about it, the more we can heal. So let's move on to the next thing. Okay, here we go. So relationship termination tactics. Oh, I forgot that one. So relationship termination tactics. I'm going to talk a little bit about this because you can have an addiction or a reaction. If you're a reactionary person, this is how I used to be is that when things weren't going well, especially when I was young, especially when I was young, that when things weren't going well, like the first fight, I would be in fear. This is like fight or flight, right? Relationship termination tactics fight or flight, I would end the relationship. I would end the relationship. And then I would like, I would get over that, like that fear. And then I want to get back together with that person. And man, I found people that would get back together with me. And I think about those poor fools right now that would go through that cycle with me. Um, and that was a cycle. It was a dark side of me. And I didn't understand it. I didn't understand what I was doing. I was really young and I was not very conscious of what I was doing. So relationship termination tactics, the way you, the way you terminate a relationship can also be very unhealthy as well. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to the next slide. So we're looking at deception. What do we, what are we going to, we're going to focus on that now. We're going to focus for this particular lecture. Okay. Here's an interesting thing about men and women. So men and women, according to the literature, they do not differ in the amount of deception that they, or the amount of lies that they engage in. 
Okay. Men and women. So if you think women are be bigger liars or men are bigger liars, that is not the truth. Okay. That's not the truth. They actually differ in the, the reasons behind or the content in what they lie about. So women, women will lie to save a person's feelings and men will lie to save face, to make themselves look better. Now, what we have learned so far about gender in this class, it really actually makes perfect sense that those are the motivations for lying, doesn't it? Right? We've learned about the social socialization of men in our culture and men's face and their masculinity and their presence and their power, all of that so important in this culture. So why wouldn't, if they were going to look bad, because bad looking bad equals less power, of course they're going to lie, right? That makes sense. I want you to see that this isn't about like how men or women are inherently bad or there's something wrong with them, that this is part of our cultural influence in terms of how we lie and why we lie. And women will lie to help people to, so they won't hurt anyone's feelings, right? And what do we know about women in this culture? Well, what do we know about women in this culture is that women are trained to take care of other people. We are, we are, that's how we're trained to take care of, to comfort, to physically hold, right? Men are out there are supposed to take, and this is, folks, we are, we are, have not left those, those traditional roles completely. It still informs how we behave in our world. What is a boy? What is a girl? It's changing. It's changing. I'd love to see the literature on this in like 30 years, right? As we're looking, we're really trans, going trans past the gender, right? That's what transgenderism has done for us, looking past that. But it still is. It still informs reasons and motivations for lying which is very, actually very interesting. Okay, let's keep going. Deception defined. So deception itself is you're knowingly, it's an intentional lie. You're intentionally trying to keep something from someone. Okay, you're trying to either help someone to arrive at a false belief or conclusion. Right? You, you're, you as the sender, you're intentionally doing that, right? There's a motivation to do that. That's different than lying by accident or not, not having all the facts and just telling what you know. Okay. But this is, this is intentional. You are, you know that you're communicating a way to get someone to arrive at a, um, at a false conclusion about something. All right, we're going to stop there and we're going to pick up on the next video, um, continuing to talk about deception.